Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis again, continuing our rheumatology playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about ANCA, the anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. Today, we'll compare between C-ANCA and P-ANCA, the cytoplasmic ANCA versus the perinuclear ANCA. So, let's get started. In case you were living under a rock, I have had all of these videos in my rheumatology playlist. That's why you need to subscribe and save this playlist. One of the most important rules in rheumatology is that no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. Just because you have positive whatever doesn't mean that you have this specific disease. It doesn't work like this. Rheumatology is all about pattern recognition. The lab results have to fit with the history and the physical exam. A good physician always asks himself or herself, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? We have talked about anti-nuclear antibodies before. Remember, they are anti-nuclear. They are autoantibodies against your nucleus. This is different from anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. They are antibodies against the cytoplasm, not the nucleus. Cool. Anti-nuclear antibodies, again, we use ELISA or immunofluorescent. In cases of ANA, indirect immunofluorescent is superior to ELISA. Contrast that with ANCA, ELISA is superior to the indirect immunofluorescence. Why immunofluorescent is not that good? Because it depends on the observer. Some observers are good, some observers are idiots. So ELISA is more objective. Cool. ANA is reported in titers. It has to be greater than 180 to be positive. The higher the titer, the more likely you have an immune autoimmune disease, but the higher the titer does not correlate with the severity or the symptoms of this disease. That's why once ANA is positive, you should not repeat it because it doesn't matter. It doesn't tell you any new pieces of information. Anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies are IgG autoantibodies against antigen in where the cytoplasm, not the nucleus, the cytoplasm of every cell? No, only neutrophils and monocytes. They are associated with small vessel vasculitides, which is a plural of vasculitis. ANCA does not correlate with disease activity. Same thing here, like ANA. Cool. So positive ANCA doesn't mean you have symptoms of vasculitis, doesn't mean you have severe vasculitis, doesn't mean you have inflamed vessel right now. It doesn't mean that. It just means that they are associated with vasculitis. Am I having the symptoms or not? I cannot tell by the lab results. You could tell me. Do you have any symptoms or not? So ANCAs are associated with small vessel vasculitity, such as what? Granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, also known as Churg-Strauss, and pay attention, I wrote microscopic polyangiitis in small letters because they are microscopic. These are teeny tiny. It doesn't mean that I have micrographia from basal ganglia damage. Wake up, guys. Cool. Then we have primary posse immune necrotizing crescentric glomerulonephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, and this is not a lecture about politics. Cool, what else? You can have anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies, drug-induced ANCA-associated vasculitis, inflammatory bowel disease-associated vasculitis, especially with ulcerative colitis. All of these can have increased level of ANCA in your serum. I have great news for you guys. I have 50 hematology cases on Patreon. These cases are difficult, at least some of them are. You'll never answer them all correctly. Take it to the bank. It's a challenge. So go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, get the cases, send me the answers in my email, and I will reply by the correct answer key, and I'll tell you what topics you should focus on. It's going to be awesome. Go to Patreon. ANCA has patterns under immunofluorescence. What we care about is the C ANCA and the P ANCA, small c, not big C, cytoplasmic ANCA and perinuclear. 
Cytoplasmic anchor versus perinuclear anchor. What do you see here? Uniform cytoplasmic staining with no interlobular accentuation, which means it doesn't involve the nucleus. This green stuff only involves the cytoplasm. Perfect. If you notice here, the green is the anchor O2 antibodies shining under the immunofluorescence. You can see the contour of the white blood cell here. And by the way, it's a monocyte, not a neutrophil. Look at the nucleus, you idiot. You see the contour of the nucleus, the great horse show shape of this monocyte nucleus. Cool, the cytoplasm is glowing, the nucleus is dark, the demarcation is very clear. Very nice. P anchor, on the other hand, you have perinuclear staining. The perinucleus is part of the cytoplasm, of course, with nuclear extension, with interlobular accentuation. Cool, so here you cannot see the distinct contour of the cell and you cannot see the contour of the nucleus. You cannot see anything. What kind of cell? Is this a neutrophil or a monocyte? I don't know and you don't know and nobody knows and that's the whole point because it stains the perinuclear area and the nucleus so you cannot distinct both of them. You cannot differentiate between them unlike the C anchor where everything was clearly demarcated. So the perinuclear cytoplasms and parts of the nucleus are glowing under immunofluorescence. Here only the nucleus is dark as sin and then the cytoplasm is glowing. This is very nice. The whole point is that here everything is clear and distinctly demarcated. Here everything is mixed together. You cannot distinguish between them. That's how we differentiate between C anchor and P anchor under the immunofluorescent microscope. Hello. C anchor are O2 antibodies that target the anti-proteinase 3. P anca, on the other hand, are O2 antibodies that target the myeloperoxidase. How to remember which is which? There is a semi or pseudo-scientific method that I use. P anca is positively charged or cationic. The nucleus has DNA which is negatively charged as you know from molecular biology. P anca will gather around the nucleus because opposites attract. There is an enzyme inside the neutrophil called the myelo peroxidase. Cool. Myelo means what? It means the core. MPO generates free radicals which are negatively charged. Since ANCA is positively charged, it's gonna attack the MPO which is or which produces the negative charge again because opposites attract. So how to remember that P ANCA attacks the myelo peroxidase? The myelo peroxidase is negatively charged. P ANCA is positively charged. Of course they're gonna attack the, uh, these antibodies are going to attack the myeloperoxidase. If you want a mnemonic, perinuclear means around the nucleus. The nucleus is the core of the cell. Myeloperoxidase has the word myelo in it, which means core. Okay, they go together. This is not scientific, it's just a mnemonic, guys. Cheer yourself up. Let's compare between the two. Cytoplasm anca or C anca here and perinuclear or P anca here. What do you see? Uniform cytoplasmic staining with no interlobular accentuation, which means no nuclear extension. P anchor, on the other hand, you have perinuclear staining with nuclear extension. The cytoplasm is glowing, the nucleus is not glowing. In P anchor, the perinuclear cytoplasm and parts of the nucleus are glowing. C anchor targets proteinase 3, mnemonic C anchor, the third letter attacks the third number. P anchor targets the myeloperoxidase, the core targets the core. Medicine is fun once you know what the flip you're talking about. Some synonyms. C anchor is the same as cytoplasmic anchor. It's the exact same thing as antiproteinase 3 anchor, which is a 2,9 KDA neutral serine protease found in azurophilic granules in the neutrophilic cytoplasm. Again, those azurophilic granules are were in the cytoplasm of what? Of the neutrophil. C anca is the same as PR3 anca, aka antiproteinase 3 C anca, put them all in one sentence. And PR here stands for not public relations but proteinase. P anca, perinuclear anca, is the same thing as antimyeloperoxidase. By the way, it doesn't have to target the myeloperoxidase, it can target the elastase. Cathepsin G, lysozyme, and lactoferrin. MPO anchor and P anchor is the same thing as antimyeloperoxidase P anchor. 
How to test for the anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies? We have the ELISA method and the immunofluorescence method. Which one is superior? The ELISA. Why? Because it's more objective. It detects the antibodies in the plasma. Either you have the antibodies or you don't. Okay? It detects the those antigens. So it has a higher positive predictive value. What the flip is that? It's the probability of you having the disease if the test result is positive. Which means, let's say that you go to the doctor, he runs a test, the test is positive. You go to the doctor and asks, my test is positive, what's the probability of me having the disease? You're asking about the positive predictive value of the test. On the other hand, immunofluorescence, you see the fluorescent glowing under the microscope. It's less accurate. It's subjective. It depends on the pathologist or the observers. Again, some of them are excellent. Some of them are just foolish. So it depends on the observer. It's subjective. It's less accurate than the ELISA. It has a lower positive predictive value, of course. Same thing with ultrasound. If the operator is smart and knows what the flip they're doing, the results are like the kind of accurate. But if it's like an idiot son of a gun that doesn't know anything, it's basically useless. They don't know how to like handle the probe, how to apply the gel, or how to look for whatever is on the screen. That's the same concept. Some pathophysiology. Proteinase 3 and myeloperoxidase, the first being targeted by the C anchor and the latter being targeted by the P anchor, are present in the azurophilic granules. Where are these? In the cytoplasm of what? Of the granulocytes, specifically neutrophils, and which is one of the granulocytes, and monocytes, which is not one of the granulocytes. They are inside the neutrophil. They can't be assessed by serum antibodies. Why not? Because serum antibodies are in the serum. This stuff is in the cytoplasm of the cell, so it's hidden until TNF-alpha, or the interleukin-1, prime the neutrophil. Now the neutrophil is activated. The PR3 and MPO travel from the cytoplasm of the neutrophil to the cell membrane surface of the neutrophil. Now PR3 and MPO are exposed to the antibodies in the serum. Degranulation of the neutrophils will happen producing the reactive oxygen species, also known as free radicals, leading to tissue damage. In our case, it's vasculitis. See, it's easy. So, under normal conditions, the ANCA antibodies are in the cytoplasm. The PR3 or MPO are in the azurophilic granules inside the neutrophils. Not exposed to the ANCA, nothing will happen until TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 come into play, specifically interleukin-1 beta. Now the PR3 and MPO moves from the cytoplasm of the neutrophil to the surface, to the cell membrane of the neutrophil. Now they can get in contact with the anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. This is called priming of the neutrophil. Now access is granted. Priming, for those of you who are old school, prime means to activate or to make ready and prime the pump, if you remember. If you don't know what priming the pump is, it means you are very young and very shallow and naive, just like the B lymphocytes before countering the antigen. Anyways, this interaction will lead to activation and degranulation of the neutrophils, producing reactive oxygen species, more interleukin-1 and interleukin-8. This will lead to tissue damage, specifically endothelial damage of the vessel, and that's why, or that's what we call vasculitis. Do you know a drug that inhibits interleukin-1 beta? The famous steroids. That's why steroids are the most potent anti-inflammatory known to man. So ANCA associated with small vessel vasculitides, again such as granulomatosis with polyngitis. Which type of ANCA is it? The C ANCA. How about microscopic polyngitis? P ANCA. Churg-Strauss syndrome. P ANCA. Good pasture syndrome or anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody. P ANCA. Primary posse immune necrotizing crescentric glomerulonephritis, aka rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, P-ANCA. 
How about drug-induced ANCA-associated vasculitis, P-ANCA? How about ulcerative colitis-associated vasculitis, P-ANCA? All of them are P-ANCA except granulomatosis with polyangitis. So easy. C anca versus P anca. C anca is also known as cytoplasmic anca antiproteinase 3 anca PR3 anca. Then P anca is known as perinuclear anca antimyeloperoxidase anca MPO anca. Cool. C anca, example, granulomatosis with polyangitis. P anca, example of the vasculitis, you have microscopic polyangitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, also known as Churg Strauss syndrome, good best Churg syndrome, also known as anti glomerular basement membrane antibody where you have hemoptysis, you have blood coming out of your mouth and blood coming out of your urine. Drug-induced ANCA-associated vasculitis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, inflammatory bowel disease, specifically ulcerative colitis, associated vasculitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and even the autoimmune hepatitis type 1. For those of you who are really, really sophisticated, P. ANCA is divided into two subtypes. The anti MPO positive and the anti MPO negative because I've told you it doesn't have to be the myeloperoxidase, it could be anti like elastase or cathepsin or whatever. In the anti MPO positive category, you have the microscopic polyangitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. You have the rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. You have the anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody. And you have even the drug-induced ANCA-associated vasculitis. What kind of drugs? Drugs such as methimazole, PTU, etc. Cool. How about the anti-MPO-negative P-ANCA? It includes Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, chronic active hepatitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and even chronic arthritis, and primary biliary cirrhosis. This is only for the super sophisticated among you. If you are just getting started, just remember P. Anka is associated with all of this nonsense and you'll be fine. If you are super sophisticated, you should differentiate between anti-MPO positive P. Anka and anti-MPO negative P. Anka. Some bullet points, please. Anka binds to the vessel wall, triggering chemotaxis, which means the taxi of the neutrophils by chemical, leading to vascular inflammation and injury. Example, aortitis, because the aorta is a vessel. Hello, this is vasculitis also. Don't confuse eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis with the hyper eosinophilic syndrome, because hyper eosinophilic syndrome has neither high IgE nor ANCA autoantibodies in the plasma. Those three together are called ANCA small vessel vasculitis. What are these three? granulomatosis with polyangitis, microscopic polyangitis, and Churg Strauss. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis plus ANCA small vessel vasculitis equals pulmonary renal syndrome. It doesn't have to be that. It could be rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis plus good pasture syndrome. Also, we call this pulmonary renal syndrome. Not to be confused with hepatorenal or hepatopulmonary syndromes, which I've talked about in previous video. These are the pulmonary renal syndrome. Pulmonary renal syndrome. You remember a disease in among the nephritic syndromes was called post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. In the first seven days of symptoms of this disease, some patients will have low complement level, which is called by the sophisticated people hypocomplementemia. Oh my goodness. Positive rheumatoid factor cryoglobulins, and even P. anchor, as well as immune complexes. I've told you, everything in the world is P. anchor except granulomatosis with polyangiitis, which is C. anchor. I really need your support. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, support the channel, get the notes, get the 50 hematology cases, and make grandma happy. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis.